Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Perfection. I'm still not sure how to brand this video, because it's probably going to be a little bit shorter than your average Let's Look at, because there's not as much to see here as there is in maybe a more robust game. And I don't mean that derisively. Stick around, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is uh, Perfection. It is a minimalistic puzzle game, now out on Steam for the low price of $3, developed by one dude, at least as far as I know. I'm not sure if there were any other collaborators. Uh, Dumb and Fat Studios, but I feel uncomfortable calling him that. So we're just going to call him Greg Lobanoff, which is actually his name. Uh, and this ended up getting on Steam, not through Greenlight, but because it went a contest uh, via Intel it won like best puzzle game and best demo at uh, one of the competitions that Intel was running and so it got a uh, fast track ticket onto Steam. So, I've been playing a little bit of this so far, and it reminds me a lot, well I guess I should explain the mechanic first, because uh, not everyone's going to be able to relate to what I'm going to say right off the bat here, or what I was going to say right off the bat, anyway. Um, basically, let's uh, generate a new puzzle for ourselves here. Um, the outline you see in the background is our desired form for this shape. So we have kind of like an amorphous blob in front of us, and we have to slice it in such a way... That was a total accident that I managed to get that on the first try. We have to slice it in such a way uh, that we actually create that shape in the background. So, uh, obviously this can be easy or it can be a little difficult. On this one it's actually kind of difficult to see. Let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, by the way, the number of uh, the like lines at the top or these tallies at the top is the number of uh, maybe like this is how we want to slice this one is the number of uh, cuts that we can actually make in order to reach our desired puzzle shape uh, obviously this one's a little off and it's probably not gonna fit that's okay um, but yeah some of them are simpler uh, this is actually one of the easier group and they can get uh, very very difficult uh, although to be honest with you this one actually looks a oh you can rotate the shape with this. I actually did not know that. That's pretty important. Um, or they can get more difficult. Although this one, honestly, it seems like it might be one of the easier ones. If we just chop this one like this uh, or so. Oh come on, that's like it's pretty close. I guess maybe if we rotate it a little bit, we can get something better. Um, just want to make sure I'm taking the one on the other side. I think it automatically takes whichever side is bigger, but I'm not totally sure. Again, this is a game incredibly minimalistic to the extent that it doesn't even really have uh, any kind of tutorialization at all. Uh, sometimes that works for it because it makes it a really meditative experience and sometimes in my opinion it works against it uh, because I, I do get a little co confused about the mechanics. Like for example, uh, this is our interface right here. You know, I, I can click on these buttons and see what the heck happens with them. I wonder if this X button probably closes the game, so I shouldn't hit that right now. Uh, but I, I wonder what... Um each one of these means. I guess this is like just standard cut and then it gets more complex as time goes on, but I don't really understand what all the other things mean. Uh, and you know, there's no uh, main menu screen. There's no campaign progression. There's nothing like that. So this is not the kind of puzzle game where, you know, you boot it up and you're like, okay, I've got 10 more puzzles to do. I'm going to dedicate an hour to it and we're going to be finished with the game. This is much more of a game where uh, I think the intention is that you just kind of sit down and play it for a while and it's a uh, again, meditative experience and then you go about the rest of your day and Surprisingly, you're not really seeing it right now, but this is one of those puzzle games. I'm normally terrible at puzzle games, uh, but this is one of those puzzle games that I'm actually surprisingly okay at. So obviously I am setting myself up for failure here. Uh, if I could just get this one to get on there. Okay, so I, I don't also understand uh, what dictates, because you don't actually, despite the name of the game being perfection, you don't have to be 100% perfect uh, in order to uh, get... The, uh, or in order to be credited with the solution, shall we say. Is this going to be even close? No, I think I'm even further off than I was on the last one. You do have to be very, very close, uh, but you don't have to be uh, as close as you might initially anticipate. So why don't we try... This seems to be in parallel with that line. And then we just want to cut this up. Because they're kind of like the... Uh, juxtaposition of this, the shapes, they're kind of off-center. It is difficult to just do like a 1v1 match. Uh, I wonder if it's like... Could I be making a huge mistake here, and it's actually supposed to be like that? I think that's actually exactly what I was doing wrong there. Let's try this again. Uh, if I could just get like, whoa, okay, good. So you can see that one is like pretty off, but it worked. You do have to be pretty close, but uh, you can make make it work uh, regardless. One complaint that I do have is that uh, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to kind of see the shape underneath it, and this is because, you know, there's a serious commitment to a certain aesthetic or audiovisual experience here. Music's really good, really ambient, uh, and the, the visuals definitely fit that. It kind of reminds me again of kind of like the AV melding experience of something like an English country tune or something like that, uh, which I've been referencing a lot lately. But uh, still, sometimes this can obscure the gameplay a little bit. Like, if I look in the background, I can see that there is a um, I, an outline, but I wish I could see it with a little bit more clarity. 
Sadly, I cannot. Oh, you know what? The, I'm just noticing this right now. Believe it or not, I've spent like 45 minutes with this game so far, and I'm still, I guess, learning new things. If you go to a second puzzle, this means you can rotate it. So that did have something to do with rotation. Uh, interesting. I'm not sure how that necessarily affects the puzzles, because I've largely just stuck to these easy ones that did not require rotation. By the way, puzzle that we just had, uh, and I skipped away from, we may never see it again. Again, what I, what I want to emphasize here is that this is not a, uh, a game where necessarily your goal is going to be uh, to, like, beat it once and then never touch it again. That kind of sounded like I was making a euphemism for some kind of self-pleasuring uh, experience. But uh, I, I definitely feel like this is much more of a game where... How do I want to do this one? Oh, I didn't mean to do that cut. Um, this is much more of a game where uh, you just kind of sit down with it for a little while and uh, enjoy yourself and then maybe move on and, and play something else, if that makes sense. Again, I would like to stress that this is only $3 on Steam, so it is not uh, an exceptional uh, value proposition. Or not an, that's the opposite of what I'm going to say. It's not an exceptional cost. Uh, but the value proposition is there. So what I really like about it is that if you're stuck on a puzzle, you can just like generate another one for yourself here very, very easily. And the reason why, why I was saying that, you know, this might not be a traditional let's look at uh, due to the fact that there's less content maybe to talk about. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to play this game for less time. What it does mean is that uh, at a certain point, I'm, I'm reaching the state where I'm like, I'm not sure which more what more there is to talk about here. I think I can get another... Uh, solution here fairly easily. Uh, it does, it's one of those games that kind of like tasks you with finding your own achievements, if that makes sense. It, like obviously there there must be a Steam, Steam achievements that I'm just not familiar with, come on. There's very tense moments by the way when you make a cut and like watch the shapes kind of overlay with one another and then see if you're gonna actually get the solution. Uh, which if you've been working on a puzzle for a long time, uh, believe you me, uh, you're, you're gonna be eager to see if that succeeds. This looks like a deceptively easy puzzle. I wonder if we're gonna slice it like that. Oh, what I was gonna say earlier, and I should have mentioned this a lot earlier actually, is that this reminds me a lot of uh, an iOS game called Slice It, and I'm sure, you know, given the nature of the uh, App Store and, and mobile gaming in general, there's probably a number of, of iOS and Android games that have similar premises, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of reminds me, that's not the solution That's that was like so close. Let's try it again. Sometimes a little bit of trial and error involved. Oh, come on. That one's like, it's it's solid. It's in there. I think I need to make sure that the, uh, like that initial cut is a little smaller. Is what it seems like it might be asking me to do. Um, but yeah, it reminds me a lot of, uh, of that game, which I played a lot of. It's a very simple gameplay mechanic, and, and this is not the first time I've ever seen it used. But I really like this. Uh, that is, yeah, basically perfect in my eyes anyway. Um, but it's a, it's a gameplay style that I like. With Slice, it was one of the few iOS games I actually spent... Uh, any significant amount of time with. And I will, I'm gonna share my strategy. We have two uh, cuts that we can make on this one. My strategy, and these are very easy puzzles, so, you know, to be quite honest with you, a lot of you guys are probably a lot better than me at these already. Uh, but typically, uh, my strategy is to, like, look for similar shapes that some of the edges have, because, you know, on some of the more difficult puzzles, this becomes borderline impossible, because it's like, the shape that is behind doesn't resemble the shape that's in front, basically at all, and it makes it very difficult to kind of parse where you're supposed to cut, because basically you're supposed to make a cut and then a cut on that, but that might not be a, an adequate explanation. But here I can see, like, okay, this slope downwards probably correlates to this slope downwards, uh, and then we've got, like, yeah, th this matches, like, all along this side of the face here, until right here, which means we're probably going to want to cut along here, uh, and then we're going to, we only have one more cut left. Oh, then we're going to want to cut, like, here? Hey, let me share my strategy with you as I totally fail. Um, so I, again, let's try this again. I think it's going to be like straight down here and then uh, over like here. And that might... Okay, it was close enough. Good. So although this is not the kind of game where I would necessarily suggest that uh, you know, you're going to get 30 hours out of this. Uh, it is the kind of game where I totally think you could get, you know, two or three hours out of it and have a, a really relaxing time. It kind of reminds me of, like, you know, the way you'll kind of just keep your mind occupied when you're playing uh, Sudoku or doing a crossword puzzle or something like that. It does feel like you're giving your brain a workout, uh, but it's not uh, necessarily, you know, the deepest or the uh, most innovative. I don't like this puzzle because I can't really see the outline of what's going on here. Uh, it's not necessarily the deepest or... Um, you know, most interesting or most novel puzzle game I've ever played in my entire life. Does that mean it's bad? No, absolutely not. But, uh, you know, certainly I, I think there's people that are going to be watching this that are going to be like, you know, this is not a game for me. And that's totally cool. This is a game that I could uh, see not being for everyone. To a certain extent, it's not really that much for me. You know, I've, I've invested like an hour and a half 
in this by the time this video is going to be over. Ah, uh, you know, probably closer to an hour. And uh, am I going to play more of it after I finish with the video? In all likelihood, no. Does that mean that if I had spent $3 on it, I would be disappointed with my purchase? Also, no. Uh, you know, it's important to keep things in perspective, I suppose, and considering that, uh, you know, this is the same price as maybe an expensive cup of coffee. I live in Vancouver, so a lot of coffee here is maybe more expensive than your average. Uh, that is a complaint, by the way, not a brag by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, I, th I think on that experience, it's, uh, or on that level, it's, it's definitely, uh, if you're into it, it's the kind of thing that's not gonna, you know, break the bank and you're not gonna feel bad about it the next day. Not like buying necessarily a game that was $60 that you only got a couple hours out of because you didn't really like it very much. This is a puzzle that is bothering me a little bit. I think, by the way, I also hate that I, I can't really click to start a cut down at the bottom because the uh, mouse cursor just gravitates to this interface button. And, and there are some legitimate problems that I would consider borderline objective. You have to, like, it, it's just a very small thing, but it is still aggravating. I wonder if this is the right way to do it here. Uh, but again, you know, I, I don't think Sudoku's perfect either. I shouldn't have needed three cuts to do this. I think I can do this and could have done this in two, uh, but I botched it a little bit. Let's, let's make sure I can do it in three first before I get cocky. There we go. Um, okay, so we have this slope coming downwards here, this one here, this one here. and Okay, so this looks good. I think we just make one cut, like, from here to here, and... Oh, come on. It is really satisfying when you, like, just look at it and figure out the puzzle without using trial and error and just solve it on the first try. Um, maybe I can start, like, from here instead, and this will be a little bit better. Again, you know, you can see uh, kind of an example there of how I felt uh, that the interface kind of got in the way a little bit. I think it could be a little crisper in that sense. Uh, let's put this down here. But yeah, you know, I, I'm coming close to basically the end of my thoughts on perfection here. First off, I thought this was like Hasbro had gone too far. There was a board game when I was a kid called Perfection. You had to place like a crescent. Oh, I know where we have to cut here. It's like this. Um, you had to place like uh, shapes, three dimensional shapes into a board, and there was like a constant timer ticking down. So you had to like match it up. It's basically like a really rudimentary IQ test, but if you effed it up, then the uh, board would pop out and all the pieces would go flying. It was called Perfection. And I was like, Hasbro, you already fucked up your Monopoly release. You already fucked up your Battleship release. That might be. Um, Parker Brothers, I'm not 100% sure, not that it necessarily matters for the purposes of this discussion. Um, like, now you're gonna bring perfection? What are we gonna, like, drag half moons onto a board here and then it'll virtually explode in our faces? Uh, what is this, Bang Bros? But and it ended up, uh, obviously, being something totally different, and I'm, I'm glad for that, for sure. Um, but Bang Bros the game, vote for that on Greenlight, for sure. Uh, we might be able to make this one work. I think I kind of botched the first cut. But if I get very lucky, I might be able to make this work. But yeah, it's a weird puzzle game to kind of recommend to people. Uh, I do stand by that analogy that it is kind of like... Uh, it, it's a time waster in the same sense that a lot of, I feel like, mobile games, and I don't mean this derisively, are time wasters. Uh, it, but on the same level as something like a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku. A little bit, an, an intellectual grade above a word search, shall we say, and I say that as a teacher who used to use word searches all the time to fill gaps in the curriculum. So I, I really do feel that, um, you know, if, if you're the kind of person that's open to something like that, totally cool. It's it's not a 100% uh, active engrossing experience, but it is the kind of thing you can play well. Dinner's getting ready, and uh, I think you can have a reasonably, oh, come on. It's the kind of thing you can have a reasonably uh, fun time with during that span. But if you want something more from it, it's probably not the game for you. Keep in mind that this is $3, and, uh, you know, they're not asking for 15 or something like that, so... That's seriously, it's just like a little bit too big. How do I swing this one? This will probably be the last puzzle that we'll do here. It can be super aggravating. That one might have actually gone through. I can't, I'm not, I'm not very good with imagining things in two-dimensional space. That looks so crisp to me uh, that I think I might need to do this again from the very beginning because I don't think I can get much closer than that. So maybe we'll try to cut it like a little smaller and we're gonna make a little steamship here. That is too small in all likelihood. I have a feeling that the... Um, is this gonna work? Did I accidentally do this? Uh, I have a feeling that the kind of like colors around, uh, like the radial gradient here, uh, I have, like, that represents the margin of error that you can have on a puzzle, but again, the game is so minimalistic that I can't 100% be sure. Um, let's drag this one up like this, and, I, you know, I said this was going to be 
the last puzzle, but I just wanted to do one more. I really like the one-cut puzzles, uh, because, you know, you, you've got to be elegant with those. Uh, they're a little bit easier as well, which uh, is better for my puny brain. There we go. So we got one last one there. So this is perfection. There will be a link in the video description to pick this up on Steam. It's three bucks. Is it worth three bucks? If you're into this kind of thing, yeah. If you're watching this and you're like feeling really skeptical and you're like, man, I wouldn't spend a lot of time with that. You're 100% right. You would not spend a lot of time with that. And there's no point in me saying, you know, wait to pick it up during a sale or something like that. Because this is definitely a game where... You know, if the price is not right for you at $3, it's not the price, it's actually the game itself. So whether you pick this up at $1 or $3 or $0.75 cents in a summer sale, uh, you know, a year and a half down the road, uh, it's much more of a game where, you know, you look at the gameplay experience and say, you know, it, it's relaxing, minimalistic, meditative, not perfect. There are some some foibles, some finicky things that I've mentioned. Um, you know, either you're into, it, you're into it or you're not. Uh, I'm borderline on the fence, I would say, but I can understand how a lot of people would be into this uh, as a little bit of a puzzler that they can kind of just get into and get out and not stress out too much over uh, reaching completion or having their mind blown by any kind of narrative or something like that. But yeah, anyway, I, I have ranted too much. I intended this to be like a seven minute long video and here we are at minute 16. Uh, again, one man game. Uh, Greg Lobanoff has made this. You can check out his website. I believe it's dumbandfat.com. And uh, there will be a link in the video description to pick up the game on Steam if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving your support in the form of a like or a civil comment about your thoughts on the game or on my commentary or playing style. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you will see me next time, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!